Throughout the entire process, our cold card was only ever connected to this nine volt battery. So our cold card is fully air gapped, which makes it way more secure than something like a ledger or a Trezor. What's up YouTube, my name is Red. I'm a software engineer and entrepreneur living here in Houston, Texas. And today this is gonna be the first of many videos that we're gonna be doing here on this channel on the cold card Mark IV that was released earlier this year by CoinKite. The cold card Mark IV is the most secure Bitcoin hardware wallet ever created. But for this additional security, it is a little bit more complicated to set up than something like a ledger or a Trezor. So in this video, I'm gonna be taking you guys how to set up a fully air gapped cold card Mark IV from scratch and showing you how you can send and receive Bitcoin from this device. So go down below and smash the like button for Bitcoin cold storage and let's level up your brains. All right guys, so I've got my cold card here and it is currently still in the packaging that it came in. So I'm just gonna go ahead and unbox this packaging. The one thing to note about the packaging is that there is a number up here in blue and then here on the barcode and those two numbers should match. Got our little stickers here, got the cold card in its little case and then we've got this piece of paper that we're going to deal with later. And then again, we're getting this little barcode that came from within the pouch that's gonna match these other barcodes that prove that our product is authentic. Okay, and if you're mechanically challenged like I am, uh, you can just slide this covering up and down like this and that's how that's gonna come off. And then you'll have access to the little buttons here. Up, down, left, and right are gonna be on five, seven, eight, and nine. And then you'll hit X to say no and check mark to say yes. But really the big difference between something like a cold card and the new Ledger Nano S Plus is the fact that to use this Ledger Nano S Plus, you have to go ahead and plug it into your computer. Whereas with the cold card, we're actually gonna go through this entire video without ever plugging the cold card into an internet connected device and hopefully I'll go through the entire lifespan of this cold card without ever connecting it to a device that has been connected to the internet. And so how are we going to do that? We're going to power it with a regular 9 volt battery that you can just pick up from Target and we're going to use this cold power accessory that basically mounts on top of a battery and we can use a USB-C cable to connect our cold card to this battery. So let's go ahead and do that now. The small one goes with the big one here, I think. I don't know. How does this work? Bruh. Again, for the technically challenged people out there like me, you're going to take this small part of the cold power and attach it to the big part of the battery. And then hopefully the big part of the cold power should go to the small part of the battery. And you'll just press down on it from the middle like that. And then there you go, should be connected. You should see a little on off switch over here. So we'll turn that on here and you'll see the green light. And then you can go ahead and detach your little magnetic piece here from your USB-C. And we'll just keep that stored in our cold card. And then we can go ahead and plug in our USB-C cable here. We'll plug that into the one end. We'll see that it's getting power now because it's blue and we'll hook that up to the cold card. And so again, you might be seeing on the video just that the screen of the cold card is like flashing. It's not doing that in real life. That's just an issue with the Hertz refresh rate on the cold card versus the refresh rate of the camera. So in real life, the screen actually looks totally normal. By using this product, we're accepting the terms in use. We can read the full document at the URL there. So we're gonna go ahead Ahead and hit OK. Now again, this number that it's showing on screen should be the exact same as these numbers that all came in and on the bag. I don't have any concerns, so I'm just gonna click OK. So this is gonna take us to the main menu of the cold card, and the first thing we're going to do is go ahead and choose a pin code. Warning again here, there is absolutely no way to reset the pin or factory reset the cold card. If you forget the pin, do not forget the pin code. Press six to prove that you read to the end of this message. I'm gonna go ahead and press six. So now let's go ahead and create our pin prefix. I'm gonna do eight, six, seven, five. I'm gonna hit check. And then it says, write these words down. And the words are book and potato. So I'm going to take my wallet backup card and I'm gonna write book and potato. I'm gonna put eight, six, seven, five in device pin. So, so far, this is what my card looks like. I'm gonna go ahead and click OK to continue. So the first part of our pin was 8675, so obviously the last part is gonna be 309. I'm gonna hit check mark to continue. So now I'm gonna write down 309 on my card. And so we can see the device pin code is 8675309. So now I'm going to confirm the first part, 8675, check. If I recognize these words, I do. Those are book and potato, the words that I wrote down on the card. And basically the meaning of these words is 
if the cold card is operating correctly and you enter that first four digits of the device pin that you created, it should always show you these two words. If it's showing you two different words, it means your device has been tampered with and that you should contact CoinKite support for help. So it can be kind of confusing. It's like, why are we writing down all of this stuff? But just know that it's for the security of the device. So we recognize those two words so we can continue. And then we're gonna enter the rest of our pin just to confirm. So 309 and we're gonna hit check. Now it's saving. And so now we can go ahead and generate new seed words for our Bitcoin wallet. Or if we were trying to import an existing, we could go to import existing. So let's go ahead and click on new seed words. We're gonna do 24 words. So it's gonna generate our seed phrase here. And so I'm just gonna go ahead and write these words down on our piece of paper. This again, you should never share your 24 words with anyone, but I'm going to delete this wallet and create a new one after this video. For now, let's go ahead and write these down and I will cut to when I have written down all of them. All right, so I've written down all the 24 words that cold card has given to me here. Again, for the upteenth time, don't share your words with anyone. So now we're gonna get a little quiz on what our different words were. My word two was stock, which here is number three. My word 19 was grow, which here is number two. And my word 24 was river, which here is number one. Okay, so it asked me every single word totally out of order. So hopefully I got all the answers right and it's going to let me continue here. Enable NFC or tap. So this is a cold card Mark IV specific feature where if you wanted to in the future, let's say strike succeeds and implements Bitcoin payments at terminals across the world. And let's say five years from now, the terminal at your coffee shop accepts Bitcoin payments. You could theoretically enable this cold card to do NFC slash tap payments and you could just go up to the register and tap tap your cold card to pay for your coffee or whatever it is the same way that we use credit cards to pay for things today. You have the ability to change this later just over in settings. For now, I'm not going to enable that. And I'm also not going to enable USB drive, which allows you to connect your cold card directly to a USB flash drive on a phone or a computer. This is again, another cold card Mark IV specific feature that you can turn on and off at any time. I'm going to leave that off for now. The next one is disable USB port. If you intend to operate in air gap mode where this cold card is never connected to anything but power and this will disable the USB port. You can change this later in settings. I'm going to go ahead and do that as yes. So I've disabled my USB port. And now my cold card Mark IV cannot be connected to a internet enabled device basically without me turning that setting back on. So right now I'm fully air gapped. Again, still only connected to this nine volt battery. So now that we have generated a seed phrase on our cold card, next we're going to come to sparrowwallet.com, link down in the description. This is my favorite open source Bitcoin desktop wallet and it works really well with the cold card. So if you don't already have Sparrow Wallet, you're just gonna come here to download. You'll choose the correct installer for your operating system and then you can come down here and verify the release if that's something that you're interested in doing. Once you've downloaded Sparrow Wallet, you can just go ahead and launch the app and it's going to look totally blank here the first time you use it. So next what we're going to do is we're going to export our XPUB or our extended public key from our cold card onto our Sparrow wallet on our desktop so that we can interact with it. So what we're gonna need next is a little micro SD card and we're just gonna slide that into the side of the cold card and you should be able to click it in there. We're gonna come down here to advanced slash tools and we're gonna click on export wallet. You'll see some options here. There's Bitcoin Core, Electrum, Wasabi, Unchained Capital, but we're going to want generic JSON here. We're just gonna go ahead and hit check. This is going to save a JSON file with our extended public keys from this Bitcoin wallet that we just generated on our cold card. And if you guys are interested in me doing a video on what an XPUB is, go down below and leave a comment and I'll start to work on a video explaining what an XPUB is and how they work. XPUBs are a very fundamental part of Bitcoin and the 10 second description is that it's just all of the different public keys that are associated with your wallet. So we'll go ahead and hit check. I'm going to leave account number here blank. If you really know what you're doing, you can go ahead and change this to whatever is going to fit your circumstance, but let's just go ahead and skip this for now. So it's generating our JSON file. And so now generic export file written and we're seeing that it was saved to cold card export.json. So we'll go ahead and hit check. And now that JSON file of our XPUB should be sitting on this micro SD card. So let's go ahead and eject the micro SD card. We'll plug it into a SD card, micro SD card, SD card adapter, and we'll go ahead and plug this into our Mac here. Just go ahead and open up
open a finder window here. And if we scroll down, we'll see no name right here and we'll see cold card export.json. We can just go ahead and drag our cold card export.json onto our Sparrow wallet here. And we'll give a name for this wallet. Let's call this uh, Rets cold card and we'll click on create wallet. Sparrow is asking us if we want to use a password to protect this file on our computer. It's not going to do anything to your Bitcoin public keys or private keys. I'm going to choose not to put a password here, but just know that if you wanted to put a password here, you could, and it would stop people from getting into your Sparrow wallet on your computer. So next we will see here that we currently have no transactions. We have a send button, a receive button. On this receive button, we have a public key, which is part of one of the many public keys that were generated from our XPUB from the cold card. If we continue here, we'll see a bunch of different receive addresses that are part of our XPUB that we just imported here. We'll see the UTXOs of our different incoming and outgoing transactions, and we'll see some settings here at the bottom. So next, let's take a look at how we can receive some Bitcoin to this cold card. You guys know my favorite way to send Bitcoin is using the Strike wallet. Unfortunately for this demo, I'm not going to be using Strike because I want to make sure that the transaction gets there a little bit more quickly. So I'm going to be using the Bitcoin wallet on my Umbral full node. Go ahead and withdraw from this Bitcoin wallet. Go to receive over here in Sparrow and copy this Bitcoin address from the XPUB that was generated by the cold card. We'll pop the address right in there and we'll send uh, about 100,000 Satoshis, about $24. And I want this to happen really quickly. So I'm going to be paying seven sats per byte. I'm going to do a withdraw. I'm going to pay, looks like 25 cents in transaction fees on $24. And I'm going to confirm the withdraw. So now that I've done the withdraw, I'm just going to sit here on my Bitcoin transactions in my spare wallet. And I'm going to wait about 10 minutes for the next block to come in. And hopefully my transaction should be part of that block. One thing that I forgot to mention here, guys, about Sparrow Wallet is if it's the first time that you're using Sparrow Wallet, you're going to want to come open up preferences here and click on server. And then for the first time when you connect to a server, you can either connect to a public server or to your own Bitcoin full node. I haven't set that up yet. So I'm just using a public server and you can come here and click on edit connection and then connect to, you know, blockstream.info or Electrum blockstream.info or any of these public servers, or you can create your own connection to your Bitcoin core node. You want to make sure that you're connecting to something and then hitting test connection and making sure that this is valid because if you don't do that, your transactions will never load and your Sparrow wallet will not stay up to date with the Bitcoin blockchain. So my transaction has loaded here. I have received the 100,000 Satoshis that I sent from my Umbral full node. You might be able to notice here that my new receive address has incremented to the next public key that was available within my XPUB file. And if we come down here to UTXOs, we can get at like the finest level of detail from that transaction that was just sent here to my Sparrow wallet. And if you guys want a video further explaining UTXOs, definitely leave a comment down below, but I think it's out of the scope of this video. Might be a pertinent topic, especially considering all of this Ethereum tornado cash kind of craziness that's going on right now. Now that we finally loaded our cold card wallet with funds, next let's talk about how we can spend these funds and send them out to whoever we want to. So all we're going to do for that is we're going to click on this send button here. We're going to click pay to. I'm going to go back to my umbral lightning node. I'm going to click here on deposit. I'm going to copy this address that was generated by my full node. And I'm going to paste this address here in Sparrow wallet. I'm going to say returning cold card funds. And I'm going to send the max amount of funds. And I'm going to target my transaction to show up in the next block. And then I'm going to go ahead and click on create transaction. And I'm going to click on finalize transaction for signing. So this should fully empty this wallet that I've already, you know, leaked the entire private key to on the internet here and send my funds back to my full node. So let's go ahead and click finalize transaction for signing and we'll click on save transaction. And so this is saving a partially signed Bitcoin transaction file in this wallets folder here. I'm going to instead save the file on my desktop just for convenience. And so now when I come back to my finder window here, I'm going to come to my desktop. I see my partially signed Bitcoin transaction and I'm just going to drag it onto my micro SD card that I'm going to throw back in the cold card. So now I'm going to eject my micro SD card, I'm going to unplug this, take out my micro SD card, pop it back into the cold card, and I'm going to click on ready to sign. It's going to say okay to 
send and it's going to give me the address. I'm going to verify that that is the same address that I want to send the Bitcoin to. And I'm going to see if that is the right amount of Bitcoin. Everything looks good. And there's the network fee. I'm going to press OK to sign this transaction. So here we go. And we're just going to wait. The cold card signed the transaction and it updated the partially signed Bitcoin transaction. Now when we upload the SD card, we're going to see cold card funds signed partially signed Bitcoin transaction and a finalized transaction ready to broadcast in this file called cold card funds final. And then there's the final transaction ID. So now let's go ahead and hit check mark and we'll eject the micro SD card, pop it back into our little adapter here and throw that back in the Mac. When we go back to the SD card here, we'll see that we have the original unsigned partially signed Bitcoin transaction. We have the signed version and then we have a final version which encompasses the entire transaction. So if we ever, you know, the data got dropped from our Sparrow wallet or something or we wanted to broadcast this transaction from a different wallet, you know, maybe we would be able to throw in this final version of the file rather than just the signed version of the file. So this is here is sort of like a backup if stuff goes wrong, but for the most part, you're going to be able to get away with just uploading this signed file here. So now if we click on load transaction in Sparrow and we give it this file, the signed version of our partially signed Bitcoin transaction, we hit open. We'll be able to view our final transaction here. There's our transaction ID and we can just go ahead and broadcast this transaction. And so you can't see it, but up in the top right hand corner, I am getting a little notification from Sparrow Wallet. It says new mempool transaction for about 100,000 sats. And so if I click on that message, it's going to take me back to the send screen here. And so now if we come up here to transactions, we can see our unconfirmed transactions. And if we hit the little magnifying glass here and come up to transactions in the top left, we can copy this transaction ID, head over to mempool.space and just paste our transaction ID. And we'll see that it was first seen about a minute ago. And there is our transaction. We're just hoping to get that confirmed in the next 10 minute block here. It's currently still unconfirmed. What's up guys, Ref from the future here, just in a hotel editing the video right now. Did want to throw up some screenshots. The transaction did eventually get confirmed. The blockchain was just being slow yesterday. That was pretty much all I had for the demo. We successfully sent and received Bitcoin to and from the cold card. And so here are some of my final thoughts. So to recap here, we initialized our device. We set up a pin code and a seed phrase. And during that seed phrase generation period, we had the option to roll our own seed phrase using dice. Once we had our seed phrase, we were able to import a view only version of our wallet to the Sparrow wallet so that we could interact with it on our desktop. This is how we made sure that the cold card was fully air gapped, which means that we never connected the cold card to an internet enabled device. When we interacted with the cold card, we were using it to generate files that would be put onto another device, but we were never exposing the cold card to the internet. Obviously, if you didn't care about keeping your cold card air gapped, you could plug in your cold card directly to your computer via USB-C, and then you wouldn't have to deal with all the partially signed Bitcoin transaction stuff that we dealt with when we were trying to send Bitcoin off the cold card. But in my opinion, the fact that you can air gap the cold card is sort of the point of having the cold card, and it gives you that extra layer of peace of mind because of how secure it is. And we used Sparrow for our Bitcoin wallet in this video, but I will be doing videos in the future that will show you how to take your cold card and import it into things like Blue Wallet and other more UI friendly wallets. If this video helped you guys, please go down below and like the video so that YouTube spreads it around. And then share this video with your friends who might be still stuck on a Ledger or a Trezor hardware device and show them how easy it is to upgrade to a cold card. The process for setting up a cold card is a little bit more involved like we saw in this video than using something like a Ledger or a Trezor. But I think the extra security and the little educational things that you start to learn about Bitcoin like UTXOs and sort of the behind the scenes, how does Bitcoin work, make using a cold card really worth it. Comment down below what other videos do you want to see me make about the cold card Mark IV and leave any questions down there as well. I do still respond to all the comments and then come back here every Monday at 10 a.m. Eastern for a new video. I love you all. Goodbye.